Welcome to the Bible Study Hour. We are so pleased that you have decided to join us again this week as we continue another beautiful study from the book of John. I am also very pleased to know that our team is comprised of our faithful pastors, Pastor James Sunlin and Pastor Alden Mort. They join with me, Lorna Stevenson, and this week, we hope that as we go through this study with you, you will be truly blessed. We are anxious to open the word so that we can get the lessons that are prepared there for us. So in preparation for this, we just ask you to join us in our opening prayer. Our Heavenly Father, you have been our God. You love us. You care for us. And you have provided these wonderful truths in your words that we can study and find direction for our lives. As we now delve into our lesson study, we pray that your Holy Spirit will guide our minds, give us clear understanding of these truths. And we pray, Lord, that even as we share with our viewers, that all of us will be blessed in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. The Apostle John is intent on letting readers know who Jesus is. And the testimony that is given right across the board is made very clear to us. That's why this week we are looking at the testimony of the Samaritans. We are already at lesson number five. Now, the author of the lesson takes us across chapter to chapter, different places where themes are pursued. But for this week, we are focusing mostly on chapter four. When you recall chapter four of the book of John, there's something which stands out because this is the chapter which deals with the encounter with the woman of Samaria. And it's the woman at the well because I suppose that that stands out to us as a well-known story, but we are going to be going through aspects of it in our study this week that will make us think again. We start off with a memory text which comes to us from verse 42. That's John chapter 4, verse 42, 42 and it says, Then, then they, they said to the woman, one, Now we believe, believe not because, because of what you said, for, for we ourselves have heard him, him and we know that, that this is indeed the Christ, Christ the, the Savior, Savior of the world. Of the world. Now, this verse makes it sound as if we have come to a conclusion. We have no. come to the end. Yes. But it's always good to start with something on which we are also going to end. Yes. Mm -hmm. So when we talk about they said to the woman, I would want you to comment on this text a little bit before we get to the conclusion. Of course, this is talking about the Samaritans. Yes. The Samaritans' um, testimony. Mm -hmm. And um, so this story is couched in the whole Sam Samaritan um, town. And yeah. The, the woman at the well was a Samaritan. And so uh, this text is their own testimony of meeting Jesus and what that encounter was. Thank you, sir. Pastor, what? The, the woman of Samaritan went to her town and carried the, the gospel and that Jesus is in town. And the people came and when they saw him, they had a testimony. They said that, is that what you have said to us? But we, we, we came and we looked and we heard. And now we can say with one voice 
This is the savior of the world. Yes, and as you mentioned about they came, yes. the, the, the lesson will also teach us yes. that they not only came, but Jesus went to them. Yes. Of course. Yes. 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 So let's take it step by step as we go through now. And we're looking at the setting of this encounter. What is the setting that we are finding here? I think we will get some information if we read chapter 4, verses 1 to 7. When therefore the Lord knew how the Pharisees had heard that Jesus made and baptized more disciples than John, though Jesus himself baptized not but his disciples, he left Judea and departed again into Galilee. And he must needs go through Samaria. Then cometh he to a city of Samaria, which is called Sychar, near to the parcel of ground that Jacob gave to his son Joseph. Now Jacob's well was there. Jesus, therefore, being wearied with his journey, sat thus on the well, and it was about the sixth hour. There cometh a woman of Samaria to draw water. Jesus saith unto her, Give me to drink. I like the point at which this passage ends, the, the passage that we have just read. Mm. Give me to drink. Yes. But let's look at the setting of the encounter. First of all, many of us have forgotten or didn't spend enough time to pay attention to the fact that there was a period of time when both John the Baptist and Jesus were preaching to the people. Yes. It was not John and you're finished and then Jesus. That's right. But there was an overlap. Yes. Mm -hmm. But listen to what's happening here now. The scripture just tells us a while ago that <laughs> some jealousy started to go on. Because baptisms were going on. John was still baptizing. But the disciples of Jesus were also baptizing. Yes. And they were baptizing more. more. Mm -hmm. Seems as if more people were sort of a gathering to the Jesus camp. Yes. Yes. Jesus, as he was, mm -hmm. and as he is, mm -hmm. he decided that, look here. We don't want any sort of, oh, you know, competition and thing going on here. <laughs> of course not. So let me leave this area yes. for a while mm -hmm. and go elsewhere. So he's journeying now from one place to another. That's right. And this other place that he's going to, he's going to Galilee. Yes. Mm -hmm. One of the routes... To take him there would be through Samaria. Yeah. And he decided to use this. Pick it up from there for me, please. What is the strangeness about this encounter that he now has with the woman at the well? Well, it is a strange encounter in the sense that it's not Jesus' usual place of witness or preaching and teaching. But he's on his journey towards Galilee. And he's passing through Samaria. And he must have had real reason for doing that. He must have had this woman in mind. Uh, as, as, as God, he had that discernment more than just a normal human being. Mm -hmm. And he wanted to witness to those Samaritans who the Jews did not like. For first of all, the Jews would not want to pass through. Uh, Samaria on their journey towards Galilee. So they would normally go another route All the way around. just to avoid the Samaritans. Because we know uh, that based on the history that the Samaritans are not purebred Jews. They are a mixture of, of other, you know, nationality. And um, so there has been a little animosity between the devout Jews and the Samaritans. And Jesus decided that I have a reason to go through this place because there are children there who must be saved also. Right. And there was something also about this encounter that we, we, we would want to highlight yes. in terms of when uh, yes. and with whom. Go yes. ahead, Pastor. No. If you notice that you know, Jesus 
you know, came to the well of Jacob. And the disciples who were traveling were hungry, and they left him to get food. And while he was there, it was, as the Bible says that, it was a sixth hour. Mm -hmm. So it was, a, it was a, in the noon, it 12 o'clock. Like midday. Midday. Mm -hmm. And to his, should I say, his surprise, or, you know, to our surprise, a woman of Samaria came to the well. Mm -hmm. And there are so many, um, so a can give so many reasons why she's there. Some persons say that because, you know, she did not want to come in contact with anybody. Mm -hmm. She came at that time. And, um, you know, one of that was the main reason. Mm -hmm. And while he was there, while Jesus was there, the woman came. And, you know, Jesus has asked a woman, can I get some water, please? A simple question, you understand? Because I could just imagine that also, that he was also thirsty. Okay, good. Now, th th there are two things here that I just want to mention very quickly as we pass on. One, I, I think, as somebody might have asked, you know, where were the disciples? All of them had to go to shop. I think Jesus encouraged all of them to go. I, I want to think I want so. to think he encouraged them to go because yes. he wanted to be alone. Yes. The other thing is that this was a woman and for a conversation to be going on with a woman and a Jewish man, mm -hmm. kind of unlikely. Yes. But there was something special that was about mm. to happen. Yes. And I just want to say, listen to how Jesus started the conversation with this woman. Give me to drink. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Could I have a drink of water? Yes. Yes. Which reminds us that when we have encounters with others and we are sharing the word, mm -hmm. don't start with, with the word. Yes. No, <laughs> not at all. S start with the present circumstance. That's right. And use that as yeah. an opening to yes. reach others. Yes. So let's find out of some more things now that happened at that encounter at the well as we continue to read verses 7 to 12. We are still in St. John chapter 4. 7 there to 12. cometh a woman of Samaria to draw water. Jesus said unto her, Give me to drink. For this disciples were gone away unto the city to buy meat. Then said the woman of Samaria unto him, How is it that thou, being a Jew, asking drink of me, which am a woman of Samaria? For the Jews had no dealing with the Samaritans. Jesus answered and said unto her, If thou knowest the gift of God, and who it is that saith unto thee, Give me to drink, thou wouldest have asked of him, and he would have given thee living water. The woman said unto him, Sir, thou hast nothing to draw with, and the world is deep. From whence, we, from whence then has thou, come on, thou, sorry, thou, li, um, thou that liveth water, art thou greater than our father Jacob, which giveth us the well, and drank thereof himself, and his children, and his cattle? Big conversation start now. Mm -hmm. We're going back into history. Yes, because things are happening here now. But, 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 you know, as we talk about, you know, this encounter, we, we see here where we are told about the animosity that was going on mm -hmm. between the Jews and the Samaritans. Yes. And Jesus knew exactly how a Samaritan would feel about a conversation. So he did everything to make this woman feel at ease yes. so the conversation could go on. That's right. But it developed 
to a point now where the water in the well was almost forgotten. Mm -hmm. And Jesus started to talk about some other water. Right. Before I get your comments, gentlemen, I just want us to look at Jeremiah chapter 2, verse 13. Because from that verse, we are going to get some insight about this water. For my people have committed two evils. They have forsaken me, the fountain of living waters, and hewed them out cisterns, broken cisterns that can hold no water. Pastors, I'd like you to comment on the situation at the well and what Jeremiah is also saying there. Well, you know, the situation at the well is that Jesus is offering um, something that the woman doesn't have. And he's offering something that is going to satisfy her uh, desire that she will always be um, able to feel uh, sufficiently um, satisfied with what is offered. He's offering something which is salvation. Uh, the woman doesn't recognize all of this, but yet she says, I want this. Now, Jeremiah makes this uh, very important statement um, that the people of God have committed two evils. They have forsaken the fountain of living waters, who is God. And they have hewn out uh, cisterns that can't hold any water, always leaking out. In other words, uh, God's people, he said, they have put away the, the well that really would give them the best water and constant water. And what they have hewn out is just not going to satisfy them any at all. All right. So when the woman said, sir, give me this water, according to what Jeremiah is telling us, the woman was actually saying, give me Jesus. Of course. She wanted the water that comes from God. Uh, that Let's read some more of the story as we go to verses 13 to 16 of that same chapter, John 4. 13 to 16 says, Jesus answered and said unto her, Whosoever drink of this water shall thirst again. But whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst. But the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing up into its everlasting life. The woman said unto him, Sir, give me this water that I thirst not neither can hither to drink. Jesus said unto her, Go call thy husband and come hither. L listen to the woman asking Jesus for this water. And instead of Jesus saying, Here is the water. How are you going to get the water? He said, Go call your husband. Yes. Why this sudden change of topic in the conversation? Well, I, th I see two, two things coming out of this. One, Jesus is interested not only in our spiritual life, but he's interested in our social life because uh, of a truth, our social life can affect our spiritual life. And in order to get some things right with God, there are some things that we need to straighten out in order because there are hindrances in the way of the, 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 the salvation. And the second thing I'm seeing is that Jesus wants to save the entire family. Yes. Not just one person, but he wants to save the whole family, the whole community. Mm -hmm. And so he's saying, I don't want to save only you, but some other person who is connected to you. That person or those persons also need salvation. And both points that you have made are really very important points. Pastor Mort? No. The conversation that you know Jesus had with this woman, mm -hmm. it's all about water. And when the woman heard that this water shall spring up in her and she will never thirst again, she said, give it to me. Mm -hmm. Now, there was something that was hindering this water from taking root. And so Jesus, Jesus changed the topic to deal with that. If you want water, then you have to deal with this. And so Jesus went straight to the heart of the problem. Go 
and call your husband. And that was the heart. That was what was hindering the, the, the water from coming in. It's interesting how, you know, when we are advised that when we talk to others about the gospel, mm -hmm. when we talk to them about the salvation of their souls, mm -hmm. we are to be wise mm -hmm. as, as serpents mm -hmm. and harmless as doves. Here is a wisdom coming through. Mm -hmm. Listen, both of you said it. Yes. If you want this water, there's something you have to get rid of first. Of course. Mm -hmm. Because the water and that something can mix yeah, together. Work That's together. <laughs> All right. So, the, the, you know, the story of our husband started. Yes. And what a revelation that was. Wow. We continue the, the story of the encounter at the well because I know that we won't have time to discuss and to say all the things we would like to say. Mm -hmm. But let us see what we are learning from verses 16 to 26. Verse 16 to 26 of John chapter 4. Jesus saith unto her, Go call thy husband and come hither. The woman answered and said, I have no husband. Jesus said unto her, Thou hast well said, I have no husband. For thou hast had five husbands, and he whom thou now hast is not thy husband. In that saidst thou truly. The woman saith unto him, Sir, I perceive that thou art a prophet. Our fathers worship in this mountain, and he say that in Jerusalem is the place where men ought to worship. Jesus saith unto her, Woman, believe me, the hour cometh when ye shall neither in this mountain nor yet at Jerusalem worship the Father. Ye worship ye know not what. We know what we worship, for salvation is of the Jews. But the hour cometh, and now is when the true worshippers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship him. God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. The woman saith unto him, I know that Messiah cometh, which is called Christ. When he is come, he will tell us all things. Jesus saith unto her, I that speak unto thee am he. We're talking about the revelation of Jesus. Mm -hmm. And it's interesting to note here that we are reminded that in all four Gospels, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. this is the mm -hmm. only passage before his trial in which Jesus plainly stated to someone, mm -hmm. That he was the Messiah. That's mm -hmm. right. But what an interesting conversation went on there. Yes. yes. I'm yes. sure you want to comment on it. I, I give you just a little mm, of time. I just to want do that. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, and, and it was necessary for Jesus to reveal himself. Yes. Because there, here was a delicate situation. Mm -hmm. This was not a Jew. This woman needed to know who the Messiah is because her situation was desperate. Yes. Leaving her alone, that would be a problem. So Jesus just said, I am he to give her that opportunity to make that choice now, not yes. later. Yes. Yes. And um, the point that I want to pick up is that, yes. you know, you know, it's a worship, the place that you worship. Mm -hmm. Now, she was concerned, you know, about, you know, where, which place is the right. Mm -hmm. And Jesus, you know, told her that it doesn't matter the place, but it's who you worship. Mm -hmm. And he says that you must worship God. In yes. spirit and in truth. That's right. And that is what, you know, he said, you want to be faithful? Do this. And Jesus was good at time management. Yes. Yes. Oh, he yeah. made sure he got to that point before the disciples returned. Yes. Because when we pick up now from verse 27, you're going to see what's happening. Yes. Mm -hmm. So look at 27 to 30 of John 4. And upon this came his disciples and marvel that he talked with the woman, yet no man said, What seek, seekest thou, or what talkest thou with her? Or why talkest thou with her? Mm -hmm. The woman then left her water pot, and when he way into the city, and said unto the men, Come see a man, which told me all things that even I, I did 
it is not this the Christ? Then they went out of the city and came unto him. In the mean, in the mean, while his disciples prayed him, saying, Master, eat. But he said unto them, I have meat to eat. All right, Let, let's take a break right of. there. Good. So That's here it. we are with Jesus and the woman. And the woman now is at the point where she's accepting mm -hmm. what's happening there. Mm -hmm. That's right. And she's gone like kite mm -hmm. <laughs> to say, come. Yes. See a man. Yeah. And to her, when you say, see a man, that was special because Jesus had revealed himself. Yes, yes. Let's take the closing part of our study. I know we are rushing this, but let's still, you know, see what we can squeeze out of this as we read verses 39 to 42. The Bible says, And many of the Samaritans of that city believed on him for the saying of the woman, which testified, He told me all that ever I did. So when the Samaritans were come unto him, they besought him that he would tarry with them, and he abode there two days. Mm -hmm. And many more believed because of his own word, and said unto the woman, Now we believe, not because of thy saying, for we have heard him ourselves, and know that this is indeed the Christ, the Savior of the world." You know, there is a gap between verses um, 30 to 39 mm -hmm. where Jesus had a serious conversation with his disciples. Of course. Yes, we have not read that, but then he was explaining a lot of things there, which yes. also is for us today mm -hmm. to let us understand the urgency yes, that exists yes. That's right. for us to do the work that God has given us to do. That's right. That's One right. of the things that sort of, you know, tickled me a little bit and puzzled me is mm -hmm. those two days when Jesus spent with the people there in Samaria. Samaria. Mm -hmm. I wonder where the disciples were and how they managed to cope with that and all that. We can Ooh, think on those yeah. things, but in the meantime, <laughs> because time has run away from us yes. so quickly, I just want you pastors to give your closing thought on this encounter with this woman and the testimony of the Samaritans? Well, as the lesson brought out, um, two important things. Jesus wanted to lead soul to salvation. Yes. And, and he knew that the Samaritans needed that. Mm -hmm. And the second thing, he wanted to teach the disciples that it is urgent and it is also important to go to others who are not in their own community. Thank you so much, Pastor Sunlin. Pastor now, Mort. Now, when you look at this and you discover, and I discover, that, you know, Jesus loves people and it doesn't matter who you are. If you're a Jew or a Samaritan, he left, he spoke to, he, he went to Samaritan, spoke to the woman, and when he finished, the entire town came, you know, you know, came out and he went to them and he ministered for four months. Yes. Yes. Thank you very much. I thought you were about to say something else. <laughs> but we must close off here. And so I say to our viewers, I am encouraging you to go again. I know some of you have done it already. But go again and read the entire chapter, John chapter 4, and see all of the development from stage to stage about sharing the gospel with others. As Jesus has taught us and as John has recorded for our learning because it is packed with information and with special lessons for us. Thank you for joining us for our study this week and we invite you to join us next time when we meet for the Bible study hour and we just want to say thanks to all those who have shared in making this study a reality for this week. Thanks to our sponsors, Easy Deal Auto Sales and Tours Limited. And thanks to God for having given us this wonderful opportunity. Now we invite you to join us in our closing prayer. Everlasting Father, our Savior Jesus Christ, we thank you for your words. 
and in it it demonstrates the love that you have for us. We ask you, now, Father, that as we look at Christ's reaction to this woman and bring salvation to her, we ask you that help us, Father, that we will come to you, Jesus Christ, and receive salvation. I present the viewers, I'm asking for your blessing, and help that this program will be of such that it will mold them and fashion them to seek after Christ and bless them and save them in your kingdom. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. Amen.